And how's it going, guys? Joshua LaFem here, live in LA. And welcome to yet another creative week with Herman Huang, aka Coffee Liquor. Today, we're gonna be talking about the glitch slice effect. Creative week is a time when we step in every day with one of my friends that's more creative and more talented than myself and conquer a lot of really cool topics. Coffee Liquor is gonna be releasing one video every day this week, diving into the incredible world of VFX. You can actually download the project file that Herman's gonna be using so you can follow along in the link below. Try this though, watch this tutorial all the way through once, just sitting back and relaxing, soaking it in, and then download the project file, and then watch it a second time, and then actually do the tutorial with me while editing with the project file. But first, of course, we're gonna be talking about Envato Elements. If you're watching this video, you're probably a video editor, and Envato Elements is a video editor's dream. It's a subscription service that gives you unlimited downloads of the most incredible stock footage, like cloud and fog overlays, aerial footage, fire, lightning, they also have incredible VFX packs, Premiere and After Effects templates, sound effects, royalty-free music, and literally anything you could ever want as a video editor. Just by clicking the link below, you can get a 70% discount for your first month. Basically, you're just paying nine bucks. And that's it. I use Elements literally in some regard every day. Thank you as always for hyping me up, Josh. How's it going guys? It's Herman here. And today we're gonna learn how to do this glitchy face slice effect. Now this was inspired by a clip I saw from the Mills VFX reel, and then later learned it was from a video called Unfeeling. I have no idea how they did it. Maybe they wrote their own script. Maybe they didn't even use After Effects. I have no idea, but I thought it was so dope that I had to try and replicate this effect. Now, I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty tough to do and not for the faint of heart. However, if you're up to the challenge and you want to gain some insight on how I deconstructed the effect uh, so that I would you know give it a stab myself then buckle up and let's get into it now I'm gonna be using a clip that I found on Envato elements and the project file is actually gonna be in the video description below for you to download however I do encourage you to watch through this tutorial once just so you can kind of digest all the steps and uh, it'll be easier to follow along later and then you can follow along with the project file because uh, I don't want you to overwhelm yourself. There are a lot of things to cover today. Now the footage will be offline in the project file unless you get it from Elements. However, you can always use your own footage, no problem at all. And uh, the clip that I'm using today is just gonna be a girl turning her head. Except I changed it to black and white so it matches the reference video. So once you have something like that, let's get into After Effects. All right, so you've launched After Effects, you got your footage in, a new comp, which is what I have over here. So the first thing you're gonna do is track your footage. So I'm gonna track the head. In this case, I'm gonna use Mocha. I'm gonna pull it up by hitting Control Spacebar, which brings up the plugin Effects Console by Video Copilot. And it's a free plugin that basically saves some time from going to your effects window over here and trying to look for your effect. As video editors, it is important to always be efficient. So in this case, we're gonna type in Mocha, and then that will apply over here. We're gonna hit this Mocha button, and then it'll bring us into Mocha. Here, we're gonna start drawing the area with this tool over here. The area that we want to track, in this case, which is the face, I'm going to track forward right over here. Who knows what type of witchcraft Mocha uses to track so perfectly. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna start tracking backwards as well. Okay, once you've done that, hit Control S to save the data, and then you can X in Mocha. And then we're going to create a new null object by right-clicking in the empty space, go to new, and then null object. We're gonna rename this to track. And what we're gonna do is take the data that we just tracked in Mocha by going to tracking data. We're gonna create track data. And there's only one layer that we used to track, so we can hit okay. And then we're going to go to export options and then change to transform because we're gonna use the transform data and not the corner pin and layer export to the track layer that we just created. And then we're gonna hit apply export. That big, nice button will allow all the tracking data to appear in the track layer. So if I hit U, it's gonna bring up all the keyframes. As you can see, there's now this delicious data, position, scale, rotation. And what we're gonna do with this is basically track the slices that we're gonna create uh, to the face. So it tracks the movement of her head. Next thing we do is create the slices. And how we're gonna do that is by masking out uh, basically a white solid so that it acts as a mat. So we're going to right click Hit new, go to solid, and we are gonna call this mat face slice or whatever that you wanna call it just to keep things organized because organization is key along with efficiency. I'm gonna turn the visibility off just so I can still see this layer, but making sure that's still highlighted it, so I'm working with it. And then I'm going to create the slices. So in this case, I'm just gonna keep it simple and just do two slices. So we've got these two masks over here. If I turn the visibility on, it's basically just some white solids. I can hit F to bring up the mask feather so I can change the feather and it's not too sharp. Maybe just one should be fine for now. And then we're going to parent it over to the track layer. And how we do that is by clicking this 
pick whip. We're gonna hold it down and then drag it over to the track layer. And basically, this is now a parent. This is a child and the child must listen to its parent. So if the tracking data is moving around, that means this mat is also moving around, as you can see. Now you're gonna to need to make some adjustments and we're going to do that by hitting M to bring up the mask path for both of the masks. We're gonna hit the stopwatches for both of them and we're going to keyframe the position so that it uh, doesn't kind of drift off like what's happening right now. And I'm only gonna do it for a few frames just for example sake. And just to keep things organized, we're gonna trim the layer so that it starts and ends at these uh, keyframes. And how I'm gonna do this is by going to the beginning, hitting Alt left bracket, that will trim the left side and then going here, Alt right bracket, and that will trim the right side. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to actually duplicate this mat and then I'm going to have only one mask on each layer. Now, I could have done this at the start, but I kind of like just working with one layer first, but that depends on your workflow. In this case, I'm going to delete this and then I'm going to delete this. So one of them over here is the top portion, the top slice. The other one is the bottom slice. We're gonna take the track layer and however many slice layers that you decide to go with, we're gonna hit Control D to duplicate it. And then we'll just move everything on top like this and then change the color so that I don't confuse myself and I know which ones are which. And here is when we're going to differentiate a erase comp and also a slice comp. So these bottom ones, I'm gonna hit Control Shift C while it's highlighted and I'm going to pre-compose it and call it erase comp. And what this will essentially do is erase the portions of the face that I don't want to appear because it's going to be replaced with whatever I'm going to uh, kind of do the slice effect. It might sound a little bit confusing right now, but we can ignore this erase comp for now. Just go ahead and do that to set yourself up for later. And now we're gonna actually get into doing the slicing effect. How we're gonna do that is by taking this base footage, the black and white footage, we're gonna duplicate it however many times that you have uh, your slices. And we're gonna have one under Neath each mat and we can always rename it. So this one's like face slice top. This one could be face slice bottom like so. And then for these two layers, the base footage, the black and white footage, we're going to go to the track mat over here and we're going to click Luma mat. And what that does is it's going to basically cut out the portion of these layers so that it only shows the parts that are white in these layers. So if I hide everything like this, as you can see, this one is cut out according to this mask that we created, and this layer is cut out to whatever we created over here. So if I turn this bottom footage back on, it doesn't look like anything is happening until I start shifting the position. So I'm just going to trim these two layers just so it's a little more pleasant for me to see. So what we do next is take these top two layers. We are going to hit P to bring up the positioning and we're gonna start keyframing them by hitting the stopwatch over here. And that's, it's a keyframe over here where nothing happens until I decide to shift it over. So in this case, I'm just going to hold shift while I drag. So it looks like so. So I'm not gonna to get too crazy, maybe just very slight offset like so. And then I'm just gonna move a couple keyframes over here. I'm gonna copy these keyframes one by one over here. And then it's going to go back to its current position by copying the beginning keyframe over here, pasting it here, same thing for this one, like that. So now I have this slight offset motion. And I'm only gonna do this once, just so you can understand how to achieve the effect without spending too much time on it. And then we're gonna go to these bottom two layers, which is the top slice. We're just gonna keep it nice and simple for the tutorial. And then we're gonna trim this. Now, before we continue, if you're liking the video so far, please check out my Instagram page at Coffee Liquor and you can see what I've been working on. Shoot me a DM if you wanna chat or if you got any questions as well, cause I'd be more than happy to reply back. All right, let's continue. And now we're gonna turn on that erase comp. And how we're gonna do that is by first going into the comp, making sure that everything is visible, which are these two matte layers over here. So you can see the masks are appearing. Go back to the main tutorial comp. And then we're going to kind of do what we did before. We're gonna to go to the track matte. And then this time we're gonna to go to Luma inverted matte. And we're applying this to the bottom most layer, the base footage of the girl. And basically it will create this cutout. And basically whatever white portions that we're showing in this erase comp over here, if I just solo it, it's gonna cut it out so we can see through it. Now you're gonna notice there are some weird lines over here. Now, this is a little bit interesting for this effect. However, in this case, I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, I want the focus to be on the actual slice effect itself. So what I'll do is highlight this and then I'm going to mask away the area that I don't want it to appear. In the mask over here, I'm gonna change it to subtract so we don't see it anymore. And then of course, if it moves around, I wanna animate it. So I'm gonna hit M to bring up the mask path. 
hit the stopwatch. Okay, so now we don't have to worry about those lines and we have this interesting offset effect. Now, of course, we don't wanna see the black behind it. So we're going to make a new solid by hitting control Y and we're gonna use the eyedropper tool. So it is the same color as the background and then move it all the way to the back. And now it becomes kind of see-through. Now, this little bit over here, where we can still see some information is because the erase comp didn't cover that area. So I can always go back to the erase comp and then just kind of adjust here and make sure that it actually erases a little more. So when I go back to the main comp, as you can see, it should erase that portion a little bit nicely. So if you find that happens to you, then just make sure to go back to the erase comp and adjust accordingly. Now, if you feel like the positions of the slice aren't exactly where you want it, you can always reposition it however you like. Actually, I renamed this wrong. This is actually the bottom one. But now we're ready to move on to the next step where we're going to create that 3D illusion to fill the areas that would be solid. So in this case, I want the perspective to look like this area would be filled over here. And then this would also be filled as a layer and then this would be filled like so, and then fill like so. And the perspective is totally up to you. I'm just eyeballing it and just going with whatever I think will look good. So if I go to my main comp over here, which is an example of the original footage that I worked with, as you can see, I had the perspective, so it looks like it's filled in. So it looks like you're looking at a slightly higher angle. So when you're doing your face slices, make sure that you curve it in a way that matches the perspective of the subject that you're using. So now what's gonna happen is we're going to hit Control Y, to make a new solid and we're gonna call this fill. And then we're going to hide this and we're going to parent it over to this track. And what's gonna happen is similar to what we did before, we're going to create some masks. I know, there's a lot of masking involved. So we hit the pen tool and then I'm just going to draw the area that I believe should be filled. And it's okay if I overlap a little bit over here because this face slice is going to overlap what I'm drawing here. Okay, so I've drawn my masks in the areas that I think would require some depth, which are these four masks over here. And don't worry, we're not gonna be splitting them into different layers or anything this time. Uh, make sure that it is feathered uh, so that it's not too sharp of a line. So in this case, we're just gonna highlight all this after I bring up the mask feather, which was hitting F as a shortcut. We're going to change the feather to one. And hopefully at this point, I haven't lost you yet. I know there are a lot of steps, but the results are well worth the efforts. Okay, hang tight, because we're getting close to the finish line. So we're going to take this base footage over here, the original layer, we're gonna hit Control D because we want to duplicate it. And then taking this and the fill, we're just going to take both of them and throw it right on top of the background layer, but underneath everything else. And then let's just change the color to something like fuchsia so we know that it is related to each other. And here's where we start applying effects to this layer here, which we'll rename to fill effect, just so we know what it is. But before we apply any effects, we wanna change the track mat to luma mat because we want the white areas that we masked to be showing up. And this is where the fun begins. We start applying effects. And there are different types of effects that you can apply to this. In this case, I'm going to first bring up curves and I'm going to darken it. And already it looks like it's starting to create some depth in that slice. And the next I'm gonna do is bring in noise. And then we're just gonna change that to, let's say 20 and then don't use any color. So that's creating some interesting visual. And last but not least, I like to use AE Pixel Sorter 2. And this is a plugin that unfortunately you do need to pay for, but you can do so much with this plugin that I think it's completely worth it. I even did a tutorial called the Melting Pixel Effect that you can check out. And that's another way that you could use this plugin as well. But this is optional. You don't have to apply this to give it a cool 3D effect. I just like that it gives this glitchy tone to it. Now I can play with this and finesse with this for a little while, but in this case, I'm just gonna keep it simple and keep it like so. Now I can always make adjustments to this. Like I could scale it and reposition it depending on what I wanna go for. But my main issue at this point right now is that it's not showing up on this side. And that's because it's being covered by this layer over here, as you can see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these two layers and we're just gonna place it over the slice layers, which is over here. So make sure that you name everything appropriate so that you know which layer is doing what. And in this case, it's still not quite hitting this area. So I'm just going to simply take the fill effect layer here and I'm gonna drag it over until it makes sense. And then I'm actually going to mask the area that I want it to appear. All right, guys, and that is it. Congratulations, you are finished the face slice effect. Now, just a reminder, this is a really rough job. I just wanted to go through all the steps so that you know how to do it yourself. But when you actually spend the time that it deserves and do additional slices, and then actually get the perspective a little bit better, then it can look much better. So this is the other comp that I worked with. So as you can see, I drew the mask in a way where it curves up 
like so, so it's not too flat, which, you know, I did a pretty rough job over here now that I compare the two, but I did additional slices and I made it glitch more often. And then all this pretty stuff, the chromatic aberration, I simply used a red giant plugin called chromatic aberration, but there are ways for you to natively do it in After Effects. So you can use your favorite method to do an RGB split to have this glitchy feel. And then I added this little coffee liquor touch by having some glowing white eyes, which I think is a little bit creepy, but also really cool. Oh man. Congratulations, you made it through the entire tutorial. I'm proud of you for getting through all this. You now have this really dope face splitting effect and uh, it's sure to grab people's attention because it's not something that people see very often, unless you're a serial killer or something. If you are, then um, just stick to VFX. You can split people's face with VFX instead. Anyways, stay tuned to the next tutorial and uh, subscribe to Josh's channel if you haven't done so already. Check out some other tutorials I've done uh, on his channel if you like this one. Check out my Instagram as well so you can see what I've been up to and what I will be up to. So guys, until the next tutorial, let's bring it back to Josh. Let's do a, let's do a really cool transition. I'm just gonna do this and then we're gonna hope there's a cool transition. It would be a little embarrassing if it was just a basic cut. You're gonna do a basic cut, aren't you? Herman, thank you so much for yet another incredible VFX tutorial. Please make sure to watch all the other incredible tutorials that we have in this month's Creative Week with Herman Huang. I got two more videos for you to check out right here. Remember, you can get a first month of Envato Elements for only $9 in the link below. We've stopped doing the free month offer. That's been an offer that's been going on for about six months. It finally came to an end, but you can still get the first month for $9. Every subscription really helps the channel. So please make sure to check it out. Thanks so much for watching guys. And as always, remember to keep it chill.